Hi, this is Lloyd Chambers at digloid.com. I worked with Zeiss manual focus lenses for Canon and Icon for about eight or nine years now. I've made every mistake I can make. I uh, understand these lenses extremely well. I have a guide to Zeiss on my website. Um, I wanted just to discuss uh, some of the common misconceptions about lens performance. Uh, first of all, Zeiss lenses are excellent. Um, they all have their limitations and shortcomings like any other brand, but I like them a lot, which is why I shoot them. My other videos go into how to focus accurately and so on, but I want to speak specifically to some of the um, frustrations that you may experience with any lens, Zeiss or otherwise. So uh, let's go through those. Uh, common complaint is my lens back focuses or it front focuses. In other words, it's typically heard with autofocus lenses, uh, you focus on the eye and the focus ends up here in the ears. Now with autofocus that's a system calibration error. Uh, with a manual focus lens there is no front focus or back focus. You either got it right or you didn't. It can't be the lens's fault. There's always a position that will give sharp eyes. Uh, there is also focus shift which I covered in another video which can shift focus with aperture. Um, the other complaint, another uh, frustration is saying that the corners are soft or the mid zones are soft. Um, this relates to field curvature, which I discuss uh, in, in my article in another video. That is, the actual sharpness isn't a plane, but may waver in and out, like a wave or simply curve back. So when you're looking at a lens, you have to be careful to understand that you may have field curvature at work and uh, check it, a scene with near to far so you can see that. Uh, how about this one? My images are not sharp even at f5.6, so it must be the lens. Well, if that's true, you definitely have a bad lens. If the lens were focused properly for f5.6, if the lens has no focus shift and it's soft at f5.6, it probably got banged on a rock and it's indeed pretty terrible. But what if you didn't focus it accurately? What if you're off, off by one foot at 10 feet? That's plenty to make the lens look soft. And even f5.6 is going to have some trouble recovering from that. So when you test a lens, you need to make sure the focus is spot on accurate uh, using magnified live view. And you need to check that you don't have focus shift, which is degrading the image quality. And I speak to focus shift in another video. Um, Another one is, uh, okay, I stopped down to f16 and my images are still not sharp. I would rephrase this one as, I stopped down to f16 and wrecked my image. Uh, because at f16 on a high-res DSLR, you've lost a tremendous amount of contrast and some sharpness. And f22 is an absolute disaster. So you're just going to get these blah, dull images at f16. Uh, sharpening can help, but it's really not going to save the day. F11 or F13 on a DSLR, full frame DSLR is about all you can uh, hope for without really starting to lose quality. Um, another one is I focused at infinity and it's not sharp. Maybe you wanted to shoot stars or a distant scene at a wide aperture like F14 or F2. You cannot assume that the adjustment of the camera, the flange, the mounting flange of the camera to the sensor is exactly right. So even if the lens is adjusted precisely for infinity focus, which Zeiss does do, the camera distance to the sensor may not be quite right. So if you rack that lens to its hard infinity stop, you know, bang, right to infinity, it may be at infinity focus, but if you're, uh, this is an 85 millimeter lens, if it's 85, 85,040 microns at f to the sensor, you're going to have a soft image. Um, microns is millionths of an inch. It, it's that sensitive. Uh, 40 microns is the difference between a uh, world-class lens and a, a mediocre one. Uh, another favorite of mine, and I've made every mistake in the book with this, and it's why I don't like to do lens comparisons because they're so hard at 36 or 50 megapixels, is it goes like this, is that uh, my quick test showed that brand X is sharper than brand Y. Or, you know, lens, I have two samples of lens and lens A is much better than lens B. So all kinds of issues with this. Uh, 
matching fo focus exactly is extremely difficult. If you have focus shift involved, it's really, really tough because that's moving around on you also. Um, and you can have sample variations, and it might be if the lens is at infinity versus, you know, you move focus to five feet, that things change. Now lens B is better than lens A. Because if you have a focusing helicoid in a lens, everything is not going to rotate perfectly symmetrically. Things are going to, you know, essentially wobble just ever so slightly. And what was good on one side may be less good on another side now. So you really can't expect perfection, not really even at any price. And when you do a lens test, you really need to do it. I never do fewer than five and usually 10 or 20 a, B's, and I might publish two or three in my reviews because you, you have to give each lens a fair chance. Different distances, you got to look for mistakes you made, not because you're not aware of them, but because it's just not possible, even with live view, to get the focus exactly the same all the time. And then you throw in focus shift and field curvature, which I talk about in another uh, video, and very, very difficult. So, those are the things you typically hear. Um, about uh, lens sharpness and uh, you don't expect perfection, don't expect an easy comparison and uh, with practice your eye will develop, you can see if a lens is obviously off but most of the time it's not that simple.